go. Yep, it's a female. It's a gorgeous female. Monarchs are wonderful ambassadors to the natural world. They tie us back to the to the world that we actually are a part of but have forgotten. I first met monarchs when I was 19 years old, and I have been following monarchs ever since, or monarchs have been following me. For many summers, I would just collect them in the summertime and watch them go through metamorphosis. It's the most amazing thing. This is a chrysalis of a monarch caterpillar, but it was far enough along that it really couldn't be a caterpillar anymore because of all the changes inside. It shed its last skin and became a chrysalis. At the very end, when, that, when, when this little triangle has, has separated, the legs of the butterfly will push it right out and out of the way, and it will flop out of the chrysalis. Look at how those wings, look at how those wings are bending. This is all really soft right now. The exoskeleton is really soft. So the wings are, the wings are like cloth. They just, they just blow in the wind. Every year when I would raise them, something would be going on in my life and it would speak to me. And that's part of why I developed the programs I did for the public like I did. I go in and I tell you nothing but the science. If you don't know the science, you might miss part of the message. She's doing a very good thing here. She's taking the, she's taking the caterpillar home, but she's putting back on the, on the milkweed. See, she's put, got it in a little jar. She's taking the milkweed back and she's putting it in the window in her room. I've had programs getting monarchs into the children's hospital because kids who are sick and, 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 and recovering relate to the, the caterpillar turning into a chrysalis, turning into a butterfly. I never imagined this would happen to me. It was really hard to quit being the monarch lady. It, it was all of my life for years and years and years. I've been told that I qualify for MS, but I don't quite hit everything. I don't have proper sensation. I can't put things in my pockets anymore and get them back out again. I can't tell what I feel when I'm in there. I can't do buttons anymore. Um, but the biggest thing is I can't walk. I can't walk and I have very poor balance. So at this point, I don't go anywhere without my, without my sticks. Age kids. I push chairs across the room to take things from one place to another. And I'm tired. I get, I get, I get just unspeakably tired. I, I, I have to go lie down. It's not a choice anymore. All the things that you can do, you have no idea until you start not being able to. All of my life I was so healthy and I had so much energy and I could just go and do things and I would push my body beyond what it wanted and now my body says, hey, can't do that anymore. Seven years ago when I got sick, this milkweed started growing here. I didn't put it here, it just came on its own. I refer to it as my sacred milkweed. It brings the monarchs and the monarch eggs and caterpillars that I used to go hunting for right to my front door. I spent years just trying to get better, thinking, okay, well, this will make me better, and then this will make me better, and then I'll get better, and I'll be able to do everything again. I'm now getting to the place where I'm recognizing that I might not get better. I should just learn to, you know, enjoy what I've got, what I've got left at this point. I, I consider myself one of the luckiest people on the face of the planet. I have been places and done things that I really enjoyed. The monarchs are still very much a part of my life. And I believe that they will always be a part of my life. But they come to me now instead of me going and getting them.